The next lens I'd like to introduce to you has to do with balance. Uh, many people, in fact, I know from asking questions all over the world, the number one question in life most people have worldwide is the, the challenge of balance between work, uh, personal life, and family life. How do you balance all of that out? Because with the digital revolution and our instantaneous connection worldwide, we can take our work with us uh, everywhere, and a lot of people do. So one way to think about this, uh, taught to me by my mentor at Harvard, is that you, can, you could consider life to be similar to a symphony. There are multiple aspects, there are multiple rhythms and different movements. It's experienced all at once, and this can be a beautiful thing or not so much. So here is the, um, here is the score from uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Um, if you were to listen to that, you would remember the famous um, uh, notes, and um, you could hear that da 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 da, da 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 da, and you can see here where those notes are played out in paper. So, if you um, move on, if you're a musician, you'll notice that there are multiple um, instruments are playing here. We've got flutes and cornets and violins and so there are a lot of instruments all playing at the same time. Some are resting, some are playing, some are playing rest, rest, re play, play, rest, rest, play, play, rest, 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 play, play. So it's very complex and taking place all at once. Here, look how fast things are going. So, you know, the violins are playing at 100 miles an hour. The flutes and the oboes are doing nothing until you get here. And, whoa, all of this has got to come out and sound nice. Well, we could think about the AL aspects in life, the physical dimension, the intellectual dimension, the spiritual dimension, the emotional dimension, and so forth. And all of these different aspects of life are playing out simultaneously. So, for example, if you look at the physical rhythm, uh, there is a melody to the physical aspect of life. We are born weak, we grow strong, we reach some kind of a peak, we grow weak, and we die. Uh, like it or not, that's the melody that we play out in our physical life. Where do you think this physical peak is? Uh, I'm 67 and rooting for 68 as the physical peak. Medical science, however, says that uh, 27. So if you're past the age of 27, you're on this downhill slope. On the other hand, you can manage that. We have some resources that we can use to manage uh, our well-being. We have a certain amount of time. We have some talent. Uh, some energy which may be uh, partially genetically or biochemically uh, endowed, and we have some choice. We can choose how to spend our time. So if we think about 168 hours in each week, we can allocate those hours to different activities in our life. Some of it's going to be sleep, of course, but then uh, how much time do we spend grooming? How much time do we spend studying or adding to our intellectual intelligence, uh, how much time do we spend at work, and so forth. And week by week, we add up uh, all of our allocations week after week after week after week until we get about uh, 650,000 hours in a, an average lifespan. So week by week at 168 hours at a whack, we are building the structure of our lives. Now, uh, Bernard Berenson once said, forget about begging for money. I wish I could stand on a corner and beg people to throw me all their wasted hours. I would like to use those and uh, add them to my life. I have a colleague who says excellence is a neurotic lifestyle, and I kind of laughed at that until I realized, wait a minute, if you want to get really good at something, what kind of an investment does it take to become really good, really excellent? 
Uh, Malcolm Gladwell has said 10,000 hours of investment is necessary to become an expert, a technical expert at something. So if we were to array all of these AL aspects on a circle, and at the origin we have our two-day-old infant who can't even roll over, can't think for itself, and on the outer ring we put world-class, so on a scale from zero to ten. World-class physically would be uh, Olympic gold medalists, world record holders in uh, various kinds of sports. Uh, intellectual world-class was probably uh, Albert Einstein. Who's your favorite spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama or the Pope or Muhammad? Uh, how would you define world-class emotionality? Professionally, we'd probably look at um, leaders of industrialized nations. We know on the financial dimension, the world-class standard is $64 billion. So Lakshmi Mittal in India or Carlos Slim in Mexico or Bill Gates in the United States. These are all people, uh, Sultan of Brunei with roughly $60 billion of net assets and so forth. So you could, on an annual basis, take a little survey and assess your development since you were a baby and see at age 30, at age 40, at age 50, what you've done. Now, I'm going to say that world class is the standard. This is the best of seven and a half billion people, right? So it's not that everybody would be trying to be world class. You'd have to ask yourself, what are your own personal goals or ideals with regard to what you want to be? So a round circle is not necessarily the perfect balance. The question is, if you, at the end of each year, did this little assessment and you said, well, you know, I really, I can't run anymore or I can't go up and down the stairs without huffing and puffing, maybe I'd like to improve my physical conditioning. Uh, I may or may not be interested, say, in the political realm. I may or may not be interested in acquiring more things. Uh, I may or may not be interested in being a better parent, but you could individually create this green line which would outline what you want. And if you're honest with yourself, then the blue area would be what you've got, that is your level of current development, and your want-got gaps would be the spaces in between. You could decide then what you want to do in the coming year uh, a strategy, if you will, for each of those pieces. So you'll see that when we talked in our strategy segment about creating charters, an individual charter would have in the vision statement, statements about where you wanted to be, say, five years out on each of these dimensions, and then your strategy would be, how am I going to close the gap uh, where, where there are some. Some places there might not be any gaps, other places the gaps might be quite significant. So at some point, again back to this notion of a charter, uh, you might ask yourself, what's my purpose in life? Around what core am I trying to develop a balance? So I'm having this discussion with uh, a Fortune 5 company and uh, I sent people off to uh, figure out what they wanted to do with their lives, they came back and this woman raised her hand and said, my purpose in life is to raise a happy family. I'm saying, so that's really interesting. How do you justify or reconcile the last 35 years you've spent building jet engines? What's the connection between all of that time and effort, 80, 90 hours a week building jet engines compared with uh, building a happy family? And, uh, well, she said, mm hmm. So I'm inviting you all to be thinking about how you connect your core with the balance in each of these areas.